podcast with Matt and Beard, where we discuss video games, tabletops, pen and paper RPGs, and also other sources of entertainment media. We discuss their design, philosophies, or we just comment on about anything, really, with music provided to us by the very talented Brayton. Please welcome your hosts, Beard and Matt. Because it starts in three, two, one. Welcome everyone to Roleplay Podcast, episode 27. Pretty crazy. I'm your host, Beard, with Matt. Hello everyone. Hey, how's it going, buddy? What's up? Well, again, to remind everybody, we do the show at this very time, every Saturday on 7 p.m., except it might change this month because, again, beard schedule is weird, but that's okay. You can ask us question either using the chat or, you know, the Google Plus thingy or on Twitter. Um, my Twitter handle is Matt, at uh, Matt playing video, video being spelled V-I-D-Y-A, and beard is... L- at Beard Beardington on Twitter, at... L O Beard and uh, yes, on L- Twitch L Zero Beard. Follow it Beard RP. Yeah, yes. L Zero Beard. Or and also if you want to ask questions, you can just do a hashtag RP podcast so we can see your question. We'll look over there. Uh, all right. So without further ado, let's just uh, go on some of the comments we had last week uh, regarding this whole Gamergate thing because we will talk about it. We will also talk about uh, certain allegations concerning uh, Anita Sarkeesian and Zoe Quinn. Uh, but first, you know, I want to talk about well, first the comments, but then, you know, what games are all about because that's what that's what we fight for. All right. So first, uh, comment by Karenath, who says, you guys are well informed on the goings for GG. This means you guys did far more research than so-called professionals, and you did it because you, just like the rest of us, care about your hobby. Thanks for the podcast. Oh, man, Karenath, I'm feeling Thanks, the love Karen. here. I'm <laughs> feeling <Yep>. the love. <laughs> Pretty sweet. And, uh, yeah, sleep- we appreciate it a lot. Sleeptastic also commented, you got the core of this. They don't think it's corruption because they think it's normal. Mm. Of course. Yeah, All right. Uh, reference to what we were talking about last week, for those of you that didn't see the podcast last week, yeah. is uh, talking about why I, I'm at a loss as to why these journalists don't realize what they're doing is wrong. Breaking, but, Reaching codes uh, of ethics, yes. If you yeah. want to watch it, it's still there somewhere on the internet, so you can just try to look for it. <laughs> on and, YouTube, uh, yep. Yeah. Well, I mean, they, they, probably, they probably wouldn't know at this point. Anyways, so... Uh, first of all, I'd like to say, uh, of course, like just just looking at this whole month of Gamergate, uh, that obviously it's winning uh, because, I'm like, on. yeah, this the, is the, the, the attention that it garnered, you know, websites updating their codes of ethics, just their their overall viewership just dropping like flies. It's even hit Japan. Uh, you know, it's, it went international. Some people in Japan commented, you know, like, oh, there's this Gamergate going on in the, uh, I mean, in, I guess North America. And uh, yeah, so getting even better. Like, and and honestly, we even beat uh, Destiny, like a game that was hyped for millions of years and dollars. Uh, actually, it beat us for like a, a, a little while. It peaked. Actually, I'm gonna even show that uh, right now. Yeah, you should actually. Oh yeah, and for those of you that are watching on Twitch right now, I know that in the past you haven't been able to see these links that Matt is uh, sending me. You should be able to see it now. Yep. Uh, all right. So here we see uh, kind of like the top C graph that just shows stuff trending on Twitter. The orange line is Gamergate. Uh, the blue line is Not Your Shield, and the green line is Destiny. So as as you see, like there's a big green spike here, but then nobody nobody talked about it. So some people commented regarding that graph. If that text can just go away. All right. <laughs> it commented, uh, you know, Gamergate has more replayability than Destiny, so that's great. And we'll talk about this thing later. Speaking of which, did, did you hear much about that? I uh, again, uh, for viewers that are just joining us, I've recently started a new job where I'm really disconnected from the world right now. I heard that <laughs> some people were pretty happy. I heard some people were really pissed off, but it might have just been another overhype machine. Oh, it, it, I, I think it is. And for more details on that, we will talk about it later. Uh, for now, I'm just going to oh, change cool. Destiny, and I'm gonna I'm gonna just change it to hashtag. 
game, which is a tweet that some people kind of wanted to bring up to be like, well, Gamergate is full of hateful, horrible misogynists. If you want to talk about, uh, you know, game ethics, just do hashtag game ethics, and it's the new green one. And if you, if you see, you see wow. that it kind of starts because it was like because they tried to basically fragment um, Gamergate, and now. Uh, so yeah, so it's just like failed. They were like, eh, I guess I don't really care about game ethics anymore. <laughs> uh, and yeah, speaking of that, I actually have, um, I do actually have uh, some some pictures on that. That game ethics is just to basically dilute the movement. If I can again, just get the screen share button. Like, here's a new hashtag for y'all to use. Hashtag game ethics. Now go ahead and use that one to talk about ethics. You'll, you're welcome. Here's a heart. Well, I'll take the heart. Um, yeah, so anything to dilute or diffuse the Gamergate banner, blah, blah, blah. And here's, you know, the 24-hour trend graph of, of game ethics. It was really small on the other graph, and it was hard to see. Now it's um, hopefully, well, yeah, so it's just basically like, hey, guys, and then, nah. It's done. Nobody cares anymore. <laughs> All right. So that's basically how we are at right now. Uh, and uh, th this week, you know, in all this Gamergate thing, in all this environment of like, here's what games should be, here's what games shouldn't be. Oh, if a game does this, it's misogynistic. And uh, again, on the Roleplay Podcast, me and Beard, we, we see games as n more than a hobby. Uh, we think that, of course, it's, it's an art form. Uh, and yeah. I watched this video by Gather Your Party. I'm going to link it uh, in the description after the podcast. But basically, it talked about Metal Gear Revengeance, and it made a parallel between R Raiden in the story and gamers, basically, and how they have seen game. Uh, uh, it contains minor spoilers for Metal Gear Revengeance, but then again, the story is not the big element, and you won't miss anything if you, if you hear these minor, very minor spoilers. Well, at the beginning of the game, uh, Raiden basically... Defines this, talks about his sword as a tool of justice, and in the video, basically, they talk that basically, uh, Raiden was would basically be the player, and his sword is the game. Like people, it seems these they try to hype up games as something that should be more than entertainment, and it definitely can be. But uh, later on in the video, basically, you know, to make it short, they talk about uh, Raiden gets this revelation, um, and he. Uh, Basically, uh, th there's a thing he says in the game originally because it, the, the scene originally is very like edgy and stuff. Uh, but you know, in, in, and I really think the guy in the video is overthinking things. But I really like the picture that it paints of gaming, where basically they say, right. uh, because at, at some point, uh, yeah, Raiden speaks to uh, his friend, you know, over the the, in, the 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 communication thing, and he says like, "Doctor, turn off my pain inhibitors." And then you know, in, in the full edgy cutscene, he's like removing wow. the. His sword from his uh, his body, and he's like, "Yes, pain. This is why I fight." And the guy in the video says, "This is why gamers play video games. It's not, you know, there's not really a higher purpose. It's really just about challenge, pain. This is why you play video games. It's about challenge and how games are hard, and also how I would even add how rewarding it is to overcome them. I think it's it's what really matters when it comes to video games. Of course, you can have messages." in games. You can uh, talk about real issues, but at its core, a game has to be fun to be a good game, to be worthy. Because if it's right. not challenging, if it's not fun, and it has a very good story, it's still a bad game. And if your your gameplay is bad, but you have a very good story, I would say cons consider maybe making a movie or something else, or writing a book, you know, there's nothing wrong with that. I disagree. Oh, all right. Some beer disagreement over here. All right, yeah, throw it on, and, on me. And genuinely, I'm not playing devil's advocate because oh. I've played plenty of games that are a fucking cakewalk, and I would still, again, like we talked about on one of our earlier episodes. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I necessarily think that um, objectively games can be good or bad, and I don't think the difficulty and fun necessarily go hand in hand. Like as you were saying that, I was thinking of a couple of different games. You know. Uh, Richard well, Malice, Portal Portal wasn't even particularly difficult. Like, I remember yeah, I, I wrecked guess. Portal 1. And yeah, you know, thinking, sitting, thinking about it, I, I guess, fun. thinking about it, I guess I did enjoy playing Peggle, so... <laughs> right, so that. there, well, there even, you know, there's tons of, like, even Binding of Isaac, like, 
Oh it's yeah, difficult. It, it, but now it's, it's it's my game where if I'm too drunk to play anything else, that's <laughs> what I play, and it's because you can kind of just like turn your brain off. And I so I would disagree in that it needs to too, be challenging. I think that mm, fun is hard to really. Well, because uh, I mean, think think about Dark Souls. It's a game that you really liked. Uh, I think, yep. yeah, yep. and it's yep. also very challenging. Like it's really it. hard, yep. and it's, it's. I think it's also why Dota Two is probably one of my favorite games because basically, you know, like it's just like challenging yourself, like overcoming challenges. You know, like just a, a game being hard, and then when you beat it, it's like the best feeling ever. And I, I think, but I. I... So I think that that might be why you play games, and it, it it's different depending on the people, right? Like, during this whole oh, yeah. Gamers Gate oh, yeah. thing, uh, I remember, um, unfortunately, I can't quote whose channel it was, unfortunately, but I was on YouTube, and uh, a female game developer was talking about it, and she just made, like, dress-up Flash games, like those games where you literally just dress up Disney princesses in, oh, like, yeah. different clothing and stuff. Oh, yeah, these are fun. And, <laughs> like, well, yeah, and a lot of people would be like, you know, that's not really a game. I would disagree. Like, if people are playing it, if people find that sort of thing interesting, there is literally no difficulty. You're oh, just, yeah. you know, putting clothes on somebody. But if that's what you find interesting, like, that's your thing. Um, I mean, I play games that, again, yeah. don't even necessarily even have great mechanics, but I would play them for the story or for something about them. I, I think that... I, I don't even really think I can define what uh, makes a game fun or not. Oh, I do yeah. think that it's mm -hmm. important. Oh yeah. But... That, well, I think it's 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 the only thing that matters. Uh, just fun. It should be the main. Certainly. Like, fun, like and not just for gaming. For yeah. for any medium, a book can be well written if it's yeah. boring. Uh, well, then again, yep. I, I mean, someone could enjoy how re well written it is. But it but depends. I mean... <laughs> yeah, or or it depends on what you're reading it for, right? Like, for example, yeah. if you were to. Again, like we do, but if you do uh, it casually, books like you would. Oh, but certainly. If, or if you do it casually again, and it's not doing it for. Like if you're a scholar right? and you're like, like, oh, this book has uh, some pretty good uh, writing in there. Like, sure, it's fun, but if if you're writing like reading a book casually and it's like the intrigue is boring, you're you're probably gonna not gonna finish it. Uh, another good example that I can think of offhand that I've really been struggling with is, um, shit. It was that game that got big. Uh, accolades because of its like moral quandaries. I was telling you about it. It's a third-person shooter where you're like a commando in the desert. The name escapes me at the moment, but um, uh, wait, the name escapes me too. You know, okay. yeah. <laughs> I know what you're talking. Okay. Is it uh, what's the? Um... I, I'm opening my Steam. I'm sorry, viewers. Spec Ops. Uh, Spec Ops the line. Spec Ops the line. Thank you. Like. Spec Ops The Line, I don't even particularly enjoy, and that's why I'm really struggling with it, but I really want to do it to get the message, to like see what everyone really liked about it, and I see. I, again, R Richard Nellis, I think, is a good example, even though it's like some, you know, like no-name fucking shitty, well, I shouldn't say shitty, but like very <laughs> short, puzzly game, like yeah. the puzzles were crap. The puzzles oh, were some even? of the worst <laughs> okay. I've ever seen. Um, <laughs> They were terrible. Well, like I told you, like the puzzles in Richard and Alice were fucking insulting. Like, it, <laughs> okay. it's like a two years old fucking well, here's, puzzle game. Here's but my... the story was interesting. Yeah. Here's my question to you, Beard, then, in that regard. Would you, do you think you would have enjoyed Richard and Alice more if it was a movie or an, an interactive cartoon? Oh. Potentially. More than if it was a game. Potentially, because, um, I mean, not even that I particularly love that game. Because uh, I walked oh, away. Oh yeah. But uh, see, because I'm thinking about it, I guess the fact that it's being a game can sort of, I mean, it it's a bit different than if it is a movie because there's an interactivity there, and sometimes you know, I don't know, it it it, it might give you tools to make the world a bit like, I guess, just better, more interactive. You know, hide things that. You know, it gives you, I guess, more tools in certain ways than, than when you you do movies and stuff. But anyways, um, are are you still here, Beard? Because I can't hear you. All right. Well, moving on. <laughs> uh, sorry if you had anything else to say about this, but uh, your yeah, silence is killing everything. All right. So, um, and so so yeah, I guess the the thing we should re remember mostly about this exchange is that 
uh, gamers should be allowed to play whatever they want, uh, and they they do. I mean, and people shouldn't try to make games something that they aren't, or tell people what they can or cannot play. The only thing that matters is fun, and that players play what they want. Also, I think uh, you know, just also res responding to the, this this whole gamergate journalism thing, that I I don't think that gamers can be exclusionary because nobody can make you stop being a gamer if you enjoy games. Uh, if you enjoy games, you're a gamer. That's the definition of the word. Nobody can make you stop being a gamer. Um, but yeah. I, I, it's it's a little tricky. First of all, I'm going to apologize. I uh, technically am still working right now, and I will have to uh, go for a little bit. Matt will still entertain everyone. I will be back very <laughs> shortly. However, right. uh, to comment on that, I I don't know if I agree with that either. I do think that particular facets of the gamer community can be exclusionary. I mean, we've seen oh. console wars. Like, oh, that well, is yeah. developers straight up trying to market off of us fighting against one another, right? And unfortunately, <laughs> not everyone is on their show. Well, and even on this show, oh, yeah, we talked about fans. which games we find shit, like which ones we like. But like, oh, yeah. you think, again, it's almost like books or movies. Like, not you know, when you like a particular film or you like a particular series of show and other people don't, there's a level of exclusion, but it doesn't necessarily mean that that's a bad thing. But it is definitely, just that of it, course. It comes down to a particular taste. And, there, and there's definitely, I mean, groups and subgroups when it comes to gamers, even like people who like different Certainly. things. I was just saying nobody can, like, I guess, force you to or stop you to be a gamer or should, because, I mean, if that's the hobby you like to do, you should, you know, just be able to do it. And of course, yeah, I mean, I, I, cause I mean, I, I can't stop anybody from enjoying what they enjoy and, you know, I think it's pointless anyways, <laughs> but, but yeah. still, but I, I do think that, uh, despite saying this, uh, and I do totally agree with you is that when we do talk about which games we like and stuff and like with this whole games journalism thing, um, I do think that it's not detrimental to gaming to talk about what we like or don't like about things, because not only does that help uh, market it to who might want it, which is what this whole fucking debacle is about, it also assists us in um, determining what we like about certain games, uh, talking about the ideas, basically just having open discussions about whatever it is, like you would have with films, like you would have with books. Oh, yeah. You don't see people oh, yeah. out there like, you know, stop hating Twilight, like, those fucking, you know, it's not like, it's, because it's, 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 it's almost harassment. fashionable to, exactly, right? Like, you don't see those people, like, starting a Patreon because someone said that they fucking hate Edward Cullen or whatever. It's like, it's a fucking <laughs> book character, we get over it. Games is a big fucking deal because it's a big market and it's so new, people don't know how to handle it. Um, yeah. But yeah, so with that said, unfortunately, I will have to go. Of course, as soon as we start a podcast, there's a fucking emergency. So <laughs> All right, be like half an hour or so. I apologize, viewers out there, but I will return very shortly. All right, so we'll see you later, Beard. All right, so I'm going to carry the show by myself once again. <laughs> All right, so I wanted to also talk about uh, journalistic ethics because it is a subject that came a lot uh, on... On, on the whole Gamergate thing, well, because it was ma mainly the point, uh, and, you know, just how terrible the the video games journalists were when it comes to uh, being ethical. Uh, but, but I think we were a bit harsh maybe on them last week, because, of of, of course, uh, when it when it's a, um, I mean, just a, a medium, like a, an environment that is so, it, it's so, I guess, it's fairly small, so of course people will have to know each other, to be fairly friendly to each other because they need contacts, they need to be able to talk to people, uh, have a link of, of, you know, confidence to be able to bring stories. However, I think the line has been crossed, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's definitely a fine line, but it has been crossed, like, ridiculously, like, a lot over the for the past uh, few weeks. Uh, here's somebody that, uh, that, will, that comments on, on here, it's a, it's a post from, uh, from 4chan, basically, uh, somebody who, um, well, I'm just going to let the post explain itself. Basically, it says, uh, My face when I'm a journalist of 10 years and regularly visit SP, which is the sports board for 4chan. Uh, my face when I see Gamer Gamergate. I come to VN Hangout, and I see how games journalists are acting. I promised myself I wouldn't get into it, but goddamn, games journalists are the biggest bunch of crybabies I've ever seen. Jen Frank voluntarily leaves her freelancing positions because she got called out for not disclosing her monetary payments to her sources? 
Boo fucking who? Journalists act Journalist, journalists like her aren't welcome in real journalism. The fact that she can't face the music of real journalistic ethics is hilarious. Patreon isn't a conflict of interest? Okay, whatever. You should never ever pay your sources. Never. I can't believe any journalist is stupid enough to believe that you can spend... Uh, you can send someone money each month to help them pay rent and not see how this is a conflict of interest. You can be friend with them. You can have a drink with them. You can talk about the wife and kids with them. And that is fine. It doesn't always need to be disclosed, but don't fuck and pay them. Um, and even them, I mean, uh, talking about, you know, the wife and kids with them, mm, uh, might be a bit, uh, well, I mean, if it's just casual, I guess it doesn't matter. And of course, if you can have drinks with them, assuming that both people during their uh, pay for their own drinks. Continuing to read, Kotaku won't write a story on t the fine young capitalists because Grayson was involved in the story and they're afraid of harassment? Great backbone, Kotaku. First off, in journalism sometimes you have to write hard stories because it's your fucking job. Did the New Republic shy away from writing about Stephen Glass, one of their own who faked stories immediately after his was discovered? No, they apologized, fired Glass, and wrote stories about it as a way to show how they were transparent and work to regain their readers' trust. Kotaku owes you this. Scared of harassment? Get out of journalism. If I write a story about the local college team and mention they might lose, I might get a lot of emails and tweets that I'm wrong and how fucking stupid I am. It's called criticism, you fucking idiots. You don't hide your head in the ground and go, oh no, this is too scary, guys. Do your fucking jobs. And here's another post where he posted, continuing on his uh, on his rant. SP Journal here again. One other thing, if I if if I ever threaten my readers or told them I am a megaphone, I will end you. I would be fucking fired. Here is referring to Leia Alexander and the the, the tweets that she posted, which are honestly ah oh, they're, they're crazy. I'm gonna I'm gonna show you them those later. But continuing to read, uh, when I get on Twitter or Facebook, I'm an extension of my publication, and my actions could very well define how people view everyone at my publication. You don't treat readers like shit. Readers are the reason you're there, and if you treat them like shit, you don't deserve readers. You don't deserve respect if you treat your readership like shit. You don't deserve their good nature if you constantly treat them like shit. You don't deserve to be writing if you treat them like this. The relationship between reader-writer is of paramount importance. It's okay to disagree with your readers. It's okay to argue with them respectfully. After all, you're representing your publication. It's okay to tell them that you no longer want to talk, but you don't threat threaten them and try to shame them. It doesn't help anyone. And for the love of fucking God, use more than one source in a goddamn story. And again, this is going to refer to something we'll talk about later, uh, about Anita Sarkeesian supposedly being driven out of her home. Okay, she was driving, driven from her home? That's a big deal. Surely the police would have a fucking statement on it. Did you ask? No. Oh. Did you confirm with the police this happened? Oh, no. You just linked a tweet from a source and didn't even bother, bother to confirm it. Is there, uh, is there an ongoing investigation? This seems to happen pretty often with her. Oh, you didn't ask. Y you just took her word at face value because why? It may have happened, but unless you actually confirm this, you could be lied to by this source, and you will look like an idiot if you're wrong. Confirm your sources and use more than one source in a news article. That's Journalism 101. Somebody who went to journalism school? I confirm that. But continuing. Which 18 years old... <laughs> And that's Journalism 101, which 18 years old who don't know AP style can do without issue. The code of journalism is seek truth and report it. Now go fucking do it, you blogging hacks. God fucking damn it. All right. So this guy was pretty pissed. Uh, and again, I wouldn't like to ask Beard what he thinks about it, but uh, I, I pretty much agree uh, with, with, with you know most of what he says when it comes to to ethics. There's also a great video by uh, Greg Lisby, uh, who's basically an expert on journalistic ethics uh, and also law ethics. Uh, I'm going to also post that on a uh, on the I mean in the video description after the podcast. It's a very interesting thing to listen if if you care about uh, ethics in the media, not only video games media but just media in general. All right, so it's time for me to show you guys another picture. Just going to go find it. Oh, this one, this one's great, actually. <laughs> All right, screen share. Let's do this. This is a uh, comment by Zilla J R Atomic Ray or something. Um, 
And he says, I work for Reuters. I'm a journalist in the media business. Back in 2008, I sat in a conference and reviewed some proposals to integrate new sources focused on electronic gaming into our our RSS service as niche content providers. We considered a IGN, GameSpot, and a few others as syndicated online info feeds. Now, in order to label as a source uh, aff affiliated with routers, you, uh, you need to run through a checklist of about 100 items that are necessarily for journalistic integrity. Their source and its organization has to score at least a 60 out of 100 for it to be considered fair and unbiased. These tests are carried out by senior journalists, editors, investigators. None of the gaming publications scored higher than a 15 out of uh, about 100. For uh, reference, the National Enquirer scored a 38 and the MSNBC Blogosphere scored a 44. Some failures included economic ties with publishers. And again, we knew that before Gamergate started. Acceptance of favors, and again, we knew that before Gamergate started. Zero percent of staff held journalism degree, oh boy. <laughs> A very small percentage worked in other major publication, no real editing process, and no accountability. Too long didn't read, gaming journalism is a joke and a laughing stock of reporting media. Continue to read these publications if you want, but assume that everything you read is biased or an outright lie. Well... Outright lie might be an exact. Well, I guess I would say that before uh, I've seen some articles re regarding Gamergate. But yeah, it's definitely always probably like extremely biased, and that's why it's bad. Uh, you know, at least at least if they indicate like that's what that's what we want, just them to indicate their bias clearly uh, at the beginning of the articles. Like, oh, I'm friend with that person I'm reporting on. I know I shouldn't. I should probably recuse myself. But you know, I guess. <laughs> Uh, but yes, you know, it's not even surprising, though, because here's what uh, Jason Schreier of Kotaku said, if I can just bring that up. It's a tweet that I had to verify was real because I, <laughs> I, I had trouble believing that it was. So here it goes. <laughs> Nobody at Kotaku has ever claimed or will ever claim to be objective. Objectivity is a silly thing to strive for. And now you might be and <laughs> you might be thinking just like me when I saw this because I saw it as a picture and not on Twitter. And I was like there's no way there's no way this guy posted this. It's it it blows my mind. What is that? Oh, uh Beard, so I was talking about integrity and how basically video games journalism has shit in uh, sh uh, basically scored uh terribly. Uh, and, and I was like, it's not surprising because here's what Jason Schreier posted on his Twitter. And I had to verify. I had to hunt down the tweet to see that it was real because I just couldn't fucking believe it. So Jason Schreier from Kotaku. Nobody at Kotaku has ever claimed or will ever claim to be objective. Objectivity is a silly thing to strive for. See, I, I feel <laughs> that after our conversation about uh, the tweet from last week where they were talking about truth versus... Uh, objectivity. I feel like there's something in journalism that I must not understand, like what their definitions are, because this seems like journalism. A really in, 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 <laughs> normal journalists will say that. Uh, I mean, objectivity is the is paramount, but they're not journalists. That's the problem. But keep going. <laughs> Sorry. It just. I mean, there must. Again, who the fuck would quote this in this sort of circumstance, right? Like, it must. There must be something that I don't understand about their definition of objectivity oh, okay. versus truth. Like, it just like oh, why yeah, would you? Because he put say qu this? quotation. Yeah, because he put quotation marks. I guess that's a good point. Um. Right. It. I mean, personally, because why would you say this? Not not to say that it's not, but it's just it's, and it's weird. Like, if that's their their shot back, we're not going to strive for objectivity. Like. Okay, like, why? Why? <laughs> yeah. Well, they're they're bloggers, and I guess technically it's an opinion, right? Like, like we've talked about, if mainstream gaming media says this isn't a very good game, but it's a genre that you seem to like, if there's something about the mechanics that you seem to like, all power to you. But, um, it it's a little bit different when. You have a game, not even, I'll, I'll call it a game just to give her the benefit, but when you have a game that is 
has no real mechanics to it, has no real difficulty whatsoever. It's, it's and a web page. Say that it's a masterpiece. Like it's it's not right. No. It's not even good. Um, um, well, I mean, it I might understand be good. that you're filtering things through like what the general public will think are good or bad because there are some, you know, generally accepted ideas of what a good and bad game are. If there was a game where literally you put it in, it was just a black screen. I think you would be hard pressed to find anyone to be like, you know what, I kind of dig this. <laughs> Yeah. Speaking of uh, Jason Schreier, he's also kind of an hypocrite because um, he he said that he didn't really talk about uh, Gamergate because, uh, you know, as we see the, this post, um, he's like, you were hesitant to A, publish an article that would encourage or facilitate more harassment of anyone. So that's why they don't want to talk about Zoe Quinn. But, you know, if you see earlier, Patricia Hernandez posted an article about the, and we talked about this in the, uh, another uh, podcast, but Max Temkin, the one who did Cards Against Humanity, basically they, uh, some random person without any proof accused him of rape, and he was like, well, I didn't rape anybody, but maybe, like, she felt this way because of some, like, me acting wrong, and I'm sorry, but yeah. And so they were like, oh, look, uh, he... <laughs> so yeah, they, they basically put his name out there saying like even if there was no evidence being like oh he's a potential rapist but of course Jason Try is like we're hesitant to publish an article that would encourage or facilitate more harassment of anyone yeah so I unfortunately their uh, no. really fair enough. their history Fuck doesn't really show that <laughs> so mm, that's uh yeah somebody fucked up all right uh, so I wanted to talk also, of course, on this issue about freedom of speech and freedom oh, of expression. Please. Freedom of expression, because um, yeah, it's well. I mean, I mean, because to, to make games, uh, and I think most game developers will agree with that. You have to let them f be free and expose their visions and how they see the game without being like over their shoulder and, and be like, "Well, is that?" sexist? Is that misogynistic? Is that bad? Because uh, people will criticize your game about many things, and I think that all kinds of expression should be allowed. But basically, uh, Tech Raptor, this website that was taken down uh, now, this video game website that, that dared talk about Gamergate, uh, well, they posted a, uh, an interview with uh, an indie developer uh, on, basically it's his thoughts on the state of the gaming industry. And I just, uh, I'm going to let you, uh, of course, again, Beard, feel free to interrupt me at any time. Uh, tell me what you think of this guy. All right, so first, uh, the, they ask, what made you decide to go into game development? He said, uh, game development is a great way to express yourself on a global scale. Games in general are a unique experience that removes boundaries between cultures. I cannot reach a large variety of audiences as a writer because my native language is understood only by the local population. Filmmaking has its own limitation. I am a stone deaf for music. So game development was a natural choice, as I had enough skills in modeling and programming to get me started. My game is a 3D puzzle slash horror and the topic tabs a taboo subject, false rape and sexual harassment accusations. I'm trying to capture the horror of false accusations in a man's life. Nowadays, it's very, it's very popular to speak about how men are inher inherently animals who constantly harass and rape women. Nobody's willing to explore what happens to the quote-unquote real victims. Art is all about tough questions. Following one's playbook to correctly express yourself and ask only predetermined questions is evil, just evil. And then they ask, how do you feel about game development now that you have been doing it for a while? He says, game development is a tough job. And like other mediums, it's easier to ask questions and allow several sets of solutions, but extremely hard to express the questions and answers in an unusual way. And then here comes uh, gameplay, game mechanics. Those two creates an experience. Good gameplay creates more unique experience, experiences per player. A game without gameplay or game mechanics is an interactive story, and I don't think those two are the same. Calling a game an interactive story is offensive to game designers. Then they ask, what issues with development have you run into on a personal level or with journalists, other, uh, other developers or other members of the industry? He says, on a personal level, I have sacrificed my social life, and that's okay. Making games gives me enough sense of fulfillment not to whine about what is missed. Friday nights in bars or Saturday barbecues with friends, when I first fired up UDK, I already knew I was sacrificing my social life and putting myself through hell. 
I have not had any real interaction with journalists, fellow developers are, are always supportive, sometimes I'm just amazed at how far they will go to help you solve a problem. Then they ask, do you think the gaming industry is in a good position right now? He says, I cannot speak about the AAA side of the industry, but in light of the latest events, I feel sorry for the indie scene. The main reason I decided to make an indie game was uh, a well-known movie about the indie, indie scene where now well-established developers posed themselves as artists. They praised independence and creative freedom and pissed on AAA studios. Today we are on a crossroad. Direction A means as indie developers commit ourselves to censorship, and Direction B means we keep our artistic freedom. I was expecting the very same people from the movie to push events in Direction B's favor, but now one of them agrees that gamers are dead, one of them whines and acts like a toddler, and other keeps radio silence. I wonder who he's referring to. Uh, so I yes, <laughs> I feel sorry for indie scene. Today the indie scene is betrayed and raided by clueless people. Then they ask, to switch gears for a moment, you mentioned that you worked for a large media outlet. What did you learn there that can apply to the gaming industry? There's no subject you cannot discuss, and discussion requires you to be respectful towards your opponent. Even the worst quote-unquote enemy deserves respect during an argument. Without respect, discussion derails and because becomes pointless screaming. Part of the respect is having real evidence against an opponent. Just because you think somebody is wrong doesn't make him actually wrong. These notes were in an editorial playbook, and the same notes were actually used by journalists. So it would be great if the USA slash UK based large publication took notes from a third third world outlet because uh, I, I forgot to mention that but he comes from uh, I guess a post uh, URSS country that's like I mean they, they, they didn't want to specify but they said that the I guess the, the pro gaming scene is big there but uh, yeah right. continuing now that you have experiences on both sides in the media and as a developer what do you see as the biggest issue in the industry today lack of honesty and fear of the truth I think current mainstream media are the cancer of the industry. I'm not saying that tech media is all about gadgets and games. No, every single outlet should address problems in the industry, but discussion must be open and free of from name calling. The magazine where I worked was a right wing publication, and the and the uh, even they omitted name calling. Not a single mention of communist, Marxist, or something like that. And you know why? Because every editor was a professional journalist. They, they knew what ethics was. They knew one-sided arguments and name-calling was cheap. This kind of attitude led our nation to open dialogue, helped us discuss touchy topics, and in result, we are a bit better society. We need the same approach in the industry, and not the polygon-like approach where journalists and moderators oh. label you label you as rape apologist if you question prominent feminists intention and qualifications we don't need kotaku nice. where journalists self-moderate discussion and threaten everyone who doesn't agree with their view what made you decide to speak out now fifty percent personal fears and fifty percent of historical experience in my country as i mentioned before my game is about a taboo topic and i am doomed to be called sexist a misogynist and a victim blamer by some in the media in a healthy industry, every game would be judged by quality and not by how it reflects current agendas. If games are art, we must agree that art is not a concrete substance. Realism is a valid form of art. I love realism. Frankly, reality is gray. So excuse me if I don't buy irrational feminists, white and black ideas, that men are inherently rapists and women are victims. As an artist, I want to explore every side of the issue. On the historical experience note, the history of the last two centuries in my country is a history of oppression and censorship. The brightest minds of our society were executed and alienated by authorities. The only acceptable topic in art were topics mandated by censors, and the result, and the, uh, in, and the result was a, a once rich culture drained and became anti-art. I know how dangerous censorship is. Censors killed culture with several centuries worth of experience. Now imagine what they can do to a culture as young as video games. And uh, yeah. that's basically the whole thing. And I don't know for you, Beard, but I fucking love this guy. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I think his argument is completely solid. Like, I think everything he says is just, I would agree with 100%. I did like, uh, to. this is a bit of a detraction for a moment, but the... Yeah, for sure. uh, statement he made about um, interactive stories. I think that that's what we should call games, like Gone Home. And I don't necessarily think it's an insult. Again, oh, yeah. I do agree very much like you do, that um, if if your game is like 
you know, a Peggle or a dress-up game or whatever. If that's what you like, or Farmville or whatever, we may make fun of it, but it's just because it's not our cup of tea. And I would yeah. never, you know, to someone's face, be like, you are a shitty person because you or like whatever. Or you're not a real I gamer. Mean, yeah, just like how I, you know, there's people that I have heated debates with over yeah, yeah, movies yeah. that I do and don't like. Um, I think we should do the same with games. Yeah. I have an, also another interview, still from Tech Raptor, that was posted uh, way later uh, during this week because tons of things happened this week. But yeah, basically, uh, Daniel Vavra, who was very vocal on Twitter about uh, Gamergate, uh, is a developer who made uh, Mafia Games, Mafia 2, King, and now he's working. Um, Basically, indie more solo uh, with a game called Kingdom Kingdom Come Kingdom Come Deliverance. Yes, indeed. Um, and yeah, basically, the, he they are asking him about again uh, Gamergate. They're asking him what's the biggest difference in the gaming industry when comparing uh, now to when you worked on Mafia: uh, The City of Lost Heaven. Better or worse? The industry is much better now. We can be independent, we can self-publish our games, even on consoles. We can speak directly to our fans through social networks. There's new ways to fund development. All that is awesome, an ideal for growth of the scene and more original games. There's also many more communication channels, social media, YouTubers, bloggers. Back in the day, the internet was very small. Um, Paper Mags held all the power, and the journalist asked boring questions like, how many weapons, cars, or levels are you going to have? I was trying to write a sophisticated, mature story, and most of them wanted to know if it's going to be possible to drive over people. Now when I'm trying to make mature, realistic history called games, some people ask me why we don't have female knights. <laughs> You've worked... Wow. Uh, yeah, so again... <laughs> So you worked both as part of a larger company, 2K Games, and now independently at Warhorse Studios. Do you see a difference in the way the gaming industry treats independent developers and those working for larger studios? Uh, when you work for a big publisher, you do what you're told. There's very little chance that you'll be able to work on your own stuff, and it's perfectly okay. You're getting money in exchange for your, your loyalty, and nobody's holding you there. You can leave if you don't like it. I did it. I took a lot of risks and hoped that finally I would be able to do what I always wanted. But suddenly a lot of people who think they know what's good for me and the world started to tell me and many other developers what we should do, only that they don't give anything in exchange. I grew up during communism. Again, where I'm seeing some links here. Uh, when comic books yeah. were prohibited as capitalist... This is, this is fucking weird. Sorry. As, as, continue, though. as capitalist decanon propaganda. Western movies were censored. Any book that could be in conflict with s socialist ideology was prohibited. And you Whoa. went to jail for saying... <laughs> For saying what you think, so I'm allergic to any kind of censorship in the name of any ideology. The road to hell is paved with good intentions. I would like to give all the ideologues a piece of advice. If you want something to be made, do it yourself. Everyone will be happy. <laughs> nice. Wow. I mean, it's really interesting because, again, like, uh, and I mean, at the time, I was feeling a little bit under the weather. Uh, it had been a long day, but when we first started talking about Gamersgate and I was getting really passionate about that idea of free speech, like, I still stand by that a lot. And mm. um, I do think that this is largely what this argument is about. And it is, I, I find it fascinating that these developers are comparing it to communism and basically how communist like propaganda stopped any sort of western ideologies yeah. from well, influencing oh, yeah. their culture well, well, and sorry yeah i just wanted to, to chime in quickly that it is kind of like yep. a thought police it's uh it it's, is it's the same yeah. principle yeah and it's it's interesting because i do think that um you know when creating any piece of art or when uh performing in any sort of profession and and i this is something that i talk about in many fields quite a bit um is that there is sort of this idea of what you want to show people in that sort of idea. And uh, about the previous person, unfortunately, I can't remember his name, that you were just reading did, from, the, he, the guy. He did, not, he did not disclose his name. He wanted to stay anonymous. Oh, okay. Um, okay, awesome that I remembered. Uh, <laughs> but when he, he was talking about making a game about, you know, the... the male side of being accused of rape or whatever, that is something that um, you know, that that is fucking heavy and I could see oh, yeah. how you could catch a lot of heat from that because again that's the story that they don't want people to tell. And I, and I don't think I know of any game that talks about this subject so 
now no. I would be no, interested. And speaking, of, speaking of someone who uh, works in a profession where, um, not necessarily that specifically, but where you have to be careful about what you do, and I mean you do in any real profession, but yeah. you know, when working with the public, when yeah. you're in the, uh, not the service industry, but when you're in like the tourism industry that I'm in, you do have to be really careful about that shit, and that is my worst nightmare because people don't understand that if you do that, it ruins your entire life. Like it, it's oh, like yeah. swatting. Like if I were to be caught in the wrong circumstance, or someone said something, even if it was a joke, my it's not just I lose my job; my entire life is over. Yeah. Um, well, not dead, but I would go to jail and never be able to mm. find work ever again. Oh yeah, because that um, fucks you. So. Over. That is something that, you know, it's passionate and it's horrifying, and that certainly seems like something you could make like, a very compelling game about. Um, it doesn't necessarily mean that it would be a great one, and it doesn't necessarily mean that you're a rape sympathizer if you find that sort of thing interesting. It's just like how, oh, yeah. you know, uh, Greg Tito, uh, one of the published, uh, one of the editors of The Escapist, I think, he actually, yep. like, owns the fucking Escapist thing. Uh, when he reviewed GTA V, he said that he gave it like a really low score because he said that he oh, yeah. didn't like the idea of playing as villains. Yeah, which, I mean, you know what? He is totally in a right to say that. If you don't feel comfortable oh, playing yeah. as a villain, if you feel like what's happening, like totally if you don't like that. That's... I feel a little iffy about being a games publisher and doing something like that but okay i i, I wouldn't uh but i mean if he wants to mention it in his review that is fair but i don't think he totally. should like reduce the score of the game for that and i, yeah. I recall that he did so but that's basically, a little tricky yeah you're he giving gave it the game its lowest ever score yeah you're giving the game personally you don't like yeah because of one of your biases which is very wrong which uh, i mean and, and again well and it's it's, it's a slippery slope um, I'd say that you totally can voice your opinion about stuff like that, and you know what? Compared to the other escapist reviews, other than Yahtzee, I, I enjoyed it a lot more because everything else, they're like, this was the best game I've ever played. Yeah. <laughs> uh, all the time. But uh, if you don't enjoy that, that's fine, but he should have, in my opinion, wrote an opinion piece about it instead of giving it a different score yeah, because that yeah. almost seems like, again, if GTA was about uh, exploring their identities, just, and I or, haven't, I haven't really played it. I don't even particularly like GTA, but I yeah. wouldn't give it. You know, I, I have to admit, like, there's interesting game mechanics, yeah, yeah. like the catharsis potential for catharsis is there. It's just yeah. not something that I'm particularly interested in. I probably would have given it a lower score because of that, but I wouldn't have given it an abysmal <laughs> one like oh, I yeah. did. Um, oh yeah, for sure. That's Would've where it, you know. It's 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 difficult. If it's material that you feel uncomfortable with, uh, then that's fair enough. But I think yeah. that you should look at how the information is conveyed rather than how you felt about it. Like we talked about last week or the week before that, um, yeah. in The Walking Dead by Telltale Games, they touch on a lot of very touchy subjects um, that uh, can strike a chord with anyone. Um, they, you know, it's it's almost like they're potentially or they're they're purposely uh, searching for things that can disturb individuals, but that's what they're going for. It's it's like the road. Like watch the film The Road. All that movie is supposed to do is disturb you, um, and it succeeded for me. Uh, and I think that if that's what you're attempting to do, like if that's the idea that you're trying to convey, and you do it correctly, you have been successful all right uh so i'm just going to continue quickly the vavra interview um basically ask him uh again oh, oh i guess i just wanted to say before uh, just the last thing about the this gta thing you know just if you say like this thing because you should try to be objective so you can say like this thing in this game is not my cup of tea uh but you know just so keep that in mind you know you tell the viewer your own biases that's totally fair uh, but, you know, yeah. again, don't be like, this game is objective, because cause, uh, scores are viewed as objective, even though they're completely subjective, so you yeah. should, like, scores shouldn't be penalized. But yeah, continuing, so they asked Daniel Vabro, 
Are women re well represented in the gaming industry, not as characters in a game, but as developers, designers, etc.? He says, I worked with many, uh, many women in the past. Two were my bosses. I ha uh, we have several women in our team as well, and I hope that they are happy and treated like anyone else. We have a very flat structure, so anyone can ask me or Martin uh, in case uh, they have any problems. We even have two married couples working at Warhorse. And in the past, I saw several other marriages of co-workers at other companies. The only thing that I'm interested in when we hire someone is their talent, nothing else. I can't speak for other companies, but I really doubt that it's different in the U.S. or anywhere else. The funny thing is that when you ask actual female developers like Aunt Amy Henning of Uncharted fame, they'll tell you that they never had any problems. But the people who are constantly talking about this issue are journalists and bloggers who have never actually even worked in, at a gaming company. And the funniest <laughs> thing is... And here comes the fucking smackdown. The funniest thing is that when you look at how many women are actually working at those magazines criticizing the gaming industry for sexism, you'll realize that it's the same as in gaming companies. 10, 20 percent at most. Polygon has 21 editors and only five of them are women. When you look at their audience, it's 80 percent men. What a sexist magazine. <laughs> wow. It's misogyny a problem in the gaming industry, they ask him. Define industry. There's hundreds of millions of people playing games, so it's very likely that some of them are going to be stupid assholes. But saying that the industry is misogynist because some idiots, idiot wrote something on Twitter is absurd, and I strongly believe that it's used as a distraction so you don't have to talk about the real problem here. When you're accused of something, accuse your opponent of something much worse. When somebody writes hysterical, aggressive, manipulative articles calling people basement neckbeards, troll scum, he should know what's gonna come. I was attacked on the internet many, many times because I often say stuff people don't like, but I never had a need to whine about it in a magazine and play a victim. When stuff gets serious and somebody really is doing some ugly shit, the best thing you can do is call the police and not tweet about it. I was and there's also another very important thing. A large sum of gamers are teenage boys who kind of naturally tend to do stupid things and are often quick on conclusions and insults. So no, the industry is not misogynist. Stupid people are misogynist. Yep. Uh, Alright, uh, I guess because it's, it's, it's a long interview, so I'm just going to read this... Um, this last question. We know that uh, Gamergate came out with the idea that gamers are dead. Obviously, it has gone beyond that now. What do you think the goal of the Gamergate movement is, and do you agree with them? I don't think that there's one goal. It's just a lot of people which are not happy with the state of gaming journalism. So I'm going to talk about my personal motives. It took me two years to start a company. We, we almost went bankrupt several times. I think that what we are doing is really something no one has done before, and we are really trying to do it as well as we can. A realistic, a strictly accurate depiction of medieval Europe with a mature, mature story. And when we're called racist because there's no people of color in our medieval Bohemia world, because there are biblical <laughs> illuminations in our country with Queen of, of Sheba, who happened to live in Afri of Africa to... Uh, thousand years before our game and on top of that we were called sexist because we had a stretch goal to add playable female characters in our game as if it was costless to write and implement a whole new quest line into the game all this when the game is in early stages of development and they don't have a clue about the actual story do you think that anyone would want to be involved in su such absurd discussions during a campaign on which his existence as a studio depends this happened to many developers. Assassin's Creed had five different articles about its lack of a female, uh, a female character on the front page of, of an industry website in one day. Five next to each other. And we can continue the Far Cry 4 cover. Scandal. Stanley Parable was accused of racism. Wildstar was accused of sexism. God of War. Hotline Miami. Bioshock. Divinity Original Sin. Witcher. Nobody even dares to argue or protect his art because it would mean instant accusation of misogyny, racism, homophobia, sexism. And then you realize that the people who are accusing others every day have terrible conflicts of interest and very weird ethics. The pot calling the kettle black. And, uh... <laughs> yeah, it's definitely wild. And I mean, I find it really funny that uh, he happens to be pointing out that he is writing like a historical, you know, he, he's trying to write a historical game. And people are calling him sexist because of it. Because honestly, that is just what it is, right? Like, yeah, you know, you don't see these fucking feminists standing up and being like, it's, "You can't it's... write in the history books women can't vote because that's sexist." And it's like, what? <laughs> <laughs> also, comments. Uh, 
Yeah, I'll just, actually, I have to read um, the, these two last questions. They're very short. You have been a very, a very vocal on Twitter the past week about Gamergate. In one of your tweets, you mentioned the fear many developers have of being blacklisted. You also mentioned you put your reputation on the line by speaking out. Do you think that fear of blacklisting is justified? When you look at the answers, you, when you look at the moral standards of some of those people, when you see them calling respected people with different opinions, faded crackheads, shitlords, and mis misogynistic basement neckbeards, when you see that one of the biggest gaming sites, Polygon, also has a blacklist of people they don't like to hear from, what would you expect? Many people also don't go deep into the issue and they make an opinion just based on the hysteric reaction to anonymous threats, while the whole thing is about something absolutely different. Guess I do think that some of the journalists will not like me in our game. I believe that some people may start thinking that I support people who hate women, even though I absolutely do not. I may lose some friends, but I think that fighting for freedom of speech and artistic freedom is very important, and I think that some of journalists just crossed the line and somebody should say that. Lay Alexander, who writes for several mainstream magazines, has a PR agency at the same time while she's an editor at Gamma Sutra and threatens people that she is a megaphone that could destroy them and says that Adam Baldwin is a washed up crackhead. What the fuck is that? How could she still have a job? And that same person is teaching us about ethics and writing articles about childish misogynistic basement trolls? Give me a break. Last question. Will the Gamergate issue have any real effect on your approach to your upcoming game, Kingdom Come Deliverance? Uh, that, that could be changing a character, a story, or part of the world. He says no. We had a strong playable female character before all this started. We have, a gay uh, uh, we have gay characters in the game. We have different minorities in the game. Because all I want is to have a mature, strong story. A story that I wanted to tell for years. And I'm not going to change it because of outside pressure. And again, I'm like, I'm starting to be interested in this guy's game now, <laughs> because yeah, yep. yeah, because like, ah, oh, it's fucking <laughs> all right. So, moving on to the fun part of the show where we just look at people's comments and uh, well, actually, first we have to talk about a bit of hypocrisy from 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 those uh, those people. Just before the shit flinging, we're transitioning, so it's half shit flinging. Uh, right now. So <laughs> Fair enough, yeah. Uh, just a bit, uh, I guess it's a comment, uh, basically it's Brad Wardle, it's another uh, video game developer uh, developer that talks about harassment. He, and I guess he talks about many things that are similar to what uh, Daniel Vavra said, so I'm just going to skip that, but I'm going to show you um, a thing that he said that is very funny. Uh, and again, the shit flinging part of the show, but it's it's just too, it's golden. So, uh, the Daily Dot says Zoe Quinn claims Fortune was behind Gamergate the whole time and posts a link. Russ Pitts, there are no winners here. So, and then Brad Wardle just responds, they mind controlled her into sleeping with journalists and having them pay her. That is impressive. <laughs> wow. <laughs> because I mean, it's uh, he's right. Because I guess they're, you know, trying to change the... There's also this developer... Oh my god, there's a, there's an article by uh, Greg Kostikin called Gamergate Shut the Fuck Up. I didn't even bother, uh, bother reading it, so I might as well just <laughs> skip over it, but I'm sure it's a fucking gold mine. We might do it if we have time at the end, which maybe we won't. Um, there's also the Devi Ever, if I can find the D little yeps. All right, so I'm going to show you again this... Uh, all right. So basically she says, this is what happens as a female identified game dev if you don't toe the line. She exchanged uh, basically emails with Ben Kuchera, who writes at a video game journalism website. Uh, he says, uh, hey there, it's love to talk if you have time and are interested in hearing my perspective on things, Devi. He, he says, uh, let's set up something for next week. She says, sounds good, I'm usually awake during the day and I work from home, so any time is good for me. He answers, same. And later on he says, actually I'm going to decline this conversation, I wish you the best though. I guess, because uh, she, she did, she was vocal in support of Gamergate on Twitter, so maybe you heard about it and was like, well, you know what, actually uh, I don't really care about your, uh, your opinion anymore. And <laughs> Wow. Well, I mean, at least that's what it seems. So, you know, let's not jump yeah, into conclusions. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah it's, it's but here's tricky one... because 
something else could have come come up, but it's it's true. I mean, from what I've been seeing, it's it's hard to believe. But I mean, before this whole thing happened, like we were talking about, I I yep. was more apt to give journalists the benefit of the doubt at this point. I'm not really all that surprised if there's something else going on. Speaking of not giving them the benefit of the doubt, there's no there's no doubt here. So Todd Johnson. Uh, two scooter uh, answers to two scooters. Minority username, display uh, name of totally different female minority, talks exactly like a white dude. She answers, Jesus Christ, wow. it looks like I really need to do this. Hi, Todd Johnson, Gamergate, not your shield. She's both female and Asian. <laughs> Todd is going to need to take a break from the internet after that one, says Crocs. <laughs> <laughs> Lisa NGO or something. So how am I supposed to talk, Mr. White Man? Do I have to talk like this? Me of you wrong time with big American dick. <laughs> Later, wow. account is protected. And somebody has been fucking told. <laughs> somebody who... Claimed to be for the side of acceptance, and uh, everybody was just like, I doubt you would be female and not a white dude because you don't think like I do. And then she proved him wrong. He's like, Well, I guess. Uh, and it, because this was went on social media, he probably got lots of hate, and he was like, Well, I can't handle this pressure. I'm just going to hide. And <laughs> well, it just goes to show you, I think, that these people are not smarter, they're not better, they're not more objective, they're not more tolerant, they're not more moral. They just, in the end, I think, get offended more easily. Um, and people who get offended more easily, I think, are toxic to free expression and creative expression. Speaking yeah. of uh, idiots. I, I got to agree with that. They really don't understand that. Again, it's... It, and you know what? In I shouldn't say in the real world, but in actual social justice situations, it's tough distinguishing sometimes between like libel and freedom of speech like that you know some people would be offended that the police allow you know neo-nazis to do their displays in the states yeah but you know they have a right to speak their opinion oh yeah except and... when it's libel right oh, so yeah if, if they're harassing people or if they are uh, offending them to a great degree or potentially threatening which, their safety. Which is why... It, I, sorry, I was just going to say, which is why I think several social justice warriors, when it comes to wanting to silence other people, will say, I'm being harassed. Because, yeah. you know... Because yeah. it seems like they can hide behind that wall. Yeah. Um, the, the fact of the matter is... Like, behind that again, shield. <laughs> Not I, your shield. Yeah. <laughs> and, and see, in that... that like... That's clearly where this is just really stupid. And uh, the the article that you read last week about um, that black gamer minorities. basically just being yeah. like, yeah, saying that they were like trained by white people was uh, jaw dropping. <laughs> it is unbelievable that these social justice warriors are that fucking stupid. And Again, I I don't want to marginalize them either. I'm sure that there yeah. are some. Oh yeah, you know some, some that do care that feel about it. Yeah, you know, that, that disagree with me, and and quite frankly, and again, like I said last week, and I do stand by this. Um, please, if there's anybody watching the show and you feel that we're in the wrong about Gamersgate, and oh, yeah. you free. like wanted to stay out of it or whatever, we would love to have you on the show. And please, like, like I said last week, and you know what, I stand by it. You you have my word. I will do whatever I can to prove to you that you won't just come on the show to be insulted. I would love to hear your opinion about it, um, because again. Like we yeah. talked about, even though I don't necessarily agree or with you, or if you, you prefer, just, just drop us more. drop us a comment. You know? Yeah, yeah. I again, even if it's just like you know, I disagree with your opinion. I well, would still love. Okay, if, fair, but you know, I, I would love a bit of reasoning or why. An explanation. You know? <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, for sure. Well, and I, I, I don't know. I doubt that anyone would come on and just be like, I disagree with no. Oh yeah, you I mean, know, but I mean for comments. But, but, <laughs> I mean for comments. Yeah, totally. but. Um, but no, and fair enough. It's it's sort of like what we were talking about. Like uh, w watching Anita Sarkeesian's videos, or like watching these people that are opposed to Gamersgate, and it's not just to look at the comments and be like, "What the fuck?" Like these yeah. people are really stupid. Let's laugh at their dumb comments. It's you know, uh, there is more to it than that. It's listening to the other side 
And that is exactly what these social justice warriors don't want to do. They don't want to hear other people's opinions, especially when, That's the only quite problem. frankly, yeah. in, in, in the last couple of years, I mean, uh, minorities and, like, different gender identities have been explored. Like, there's games like Persona. There's games like The Last of Us. And though we may talk about things, even on this show, about whether or not using lesbian relationships to garner attention to your video game, whether or not that's, uh, you know, scummy or not, it's just a discussion. It doesn't defeat what they've oh, yeah. done. It's, it's not saying that we hate lesbians. Like, I, I <laughs> you know, like... Sorry, I just got. Beard hates somebody. lesbians. Right. It's on the record. No, I'm kidding. Wow. Right. <laughs> no, the person in the room. Never mind. Uh, <laughs> the person in the room with me is a lesbian, and like we're good friends. So it's oh. it's it's interesting situation. Can where, she can she hear me? No, no, oh. no, no. Oh. But she heard what I said. Okay. Um, <laughs> I wanted to say. Uh, I just wanted to say, Beard hates you, but uh, it's okay. I guess I won't be able to. <laughs> wow, uh, she she wouldn't she wouldn't believe you, but I know that's the, that's the point. That's the point. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, um, it's 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 just I find it like again we're starting to see the utter stupidity with a lot of these people, and I didn't think that there would be so many people like <laughs> Phil Fish that it's... are just. It's sorry. I was like, you can go on on that idea, but since you mentioned utter stupidity, I I thought of our old pal Anthony Birch, and the there's an uh, it's quite an older comment <laughs> actually yeah, that he okay. posted, but he says he, he answers to John Tron and some other people, and he's like, you know, sure, just like how casually saying nigger doesn't mean you're a racist. Oh wait, the best gamers reply. So does that mean you're a racist now? <laughs> because nice. he just casually. <laughs> <laughs> And there's also, there's even people, because of Anthony Birch, who wanted to pre uh, cancel their pre-order of Borderlands, the pre-sequel, which is a game I pre-ordered because, you know, I love Borderlands, I love, uh, I love meme lands, I love the maymays, I love the stupid gameplay. Uh, you can blame me on that. <laughs> See, I, it, I, it's a philosophy of the show to say that it's okay to like bad games, but anyways, he says... Yep, basically, we had a whole episode on that. Yeah, so basically, um, he says, uh, basically, when, when the... People sent uh, CP or child porn to Anita Sarkeesian. Anthony Birch was very quick to blame uh, the Gamergate movement, even though they fucking went batshit insane on the reporting of him because they're like, holy shit. Like, even I was on a V thread as yeah, this we... happened, and people were like in panic mode, being like, that shit is totally illegal. Let's quickly fucking like report this. This is horrible. And people are saying, you know, like. <laughs> They're like they they they're saying like I'm gonna cancel my pre-order of the game because of what Anthony Birch says because that's just unacceptable to accuse people of like propagating child pornography just because you disagree with them. Uh, and I'm thinking, see, I have this philosophy also of like no matter how much somebody might be a like a terrible person, I should answer their work for what it is. So I'm like, I don't know. I think I think I might probably still just. Uh, play the game anyway. That's actually a very interesting quandary you raise, and I think that that is a conversation we could, I mean, Have I don't know how much another podcast? It, but or, or even right now, like very, very shortly, but I mean, I don't, uh, that's a tricky situation. I've never been in a situation where I've had to look at something like that, but um, it's tricky. I think that if I knew, like I wouldn't buy Phil Fish's game now, because he's a fucking prick. Oh my god! It's it's funny because there was this uh, this kind of like conspiracy thing going on around him about how basically he was funded by people so he would get his award for his game, which makes which puts a whole new light under his quote when he said like I just won an award uh, at at IGF, suck my dick, choke on it. Um, but yeah, so again, again, it's it was just mostly conspiracy, so I'm not necessarily going to talk about that because it's nothing that's really confirmed. But uh, yeah, so speaking of uh, terrible people, <laughs> it's, it's not over. There's, um, again, we mentioned her a bit before. Uh, she, her name is Leigh Alexander. And, hey, uh, uh, sorry. I, uh, it's actually really funny. I, and this isn't to, to point anything out, but how we were talking just a second ago about how I don't hate lesbians. Uh -huh. Here is a friend of mine. Hey, Lou. The, the amazing technology of the the roleplay podcast, ladies and gentlemen. Hey, I I'm the lesbian. He doesn't hate. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> no, but yeah. no, 
Beard hates you. He despises you. He tells me when you're not, when you don't hear it. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> no. No, 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 no. That's not true at all. I'm just fucking with you. It's done. <laughs> Sorry, she, she's gone. She didn't hear that part where you said you were joking. But... Oh, wait, everything's okay then. No, but <laughs> it's cool though. Oh well, uh, whatever. Um, so. <laughs> Regardless, sorry, she just wanted to give a shout out, but yeah, 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 it's, sure. Uh, yeah, yeah, moving on. No, that's totally fair. Uh, so here's uh, some some comments by by uh, I don't know. I guess it's it's a long fucking text of her being like a terrible person. Uh, I don't know if. Well, you know what? Fuck it. I'm gonna read it, even though we might be short on time, just because I don't know. It, it gives you a interesting idea of what kind of person she is and she works for gamma sutra who by the way <laughs> anyways like which, which is yeah who started like the whole gamers are dead kind of things um so they ask her why do you think sometimes uh what do you sometimes mock nerds and gamers so virulently isn't that the same kind of bullying you rail against a lot of proud nerds are people who used uh the fact they were picked on for their interest as children to maintain as adults and fathers uh, they are most often privileged men now, a secret clubhouse that lets them victimize and oppress other participants, despite the fact that games are now a multi-billion dollar industry, increasingly stigma-free and desperately in need of the creative and professional participation of multitudes of new voices. Self-identified nerds are often so obsessed with their identity as a cultural outcasts that they are willfully blind to their privilege, and for the sake of Relatively absurd fandoms, space marines, dragons, zombies, endless war simulations. Well, th these are not fandoms, but, you know, I'm whatever lay. Um, uh, where was I? Yeah, uh, endless war simulations. Take their myopic and insular attitudes to arts and culture with tunnel-visioned, inflexible, embarrassing seriousness that often leads to homogeneity, racism, sexism, and bullying. Nerds escaped high school. Some of them made millions making video games. Digital literacy doesn't make you special anymore. It makes you a baseline employee. Fantasy is on mainstream cable. Meanwhile, actual systemic oppression is punishing people not just where they wish to participate in games, but in every day of the rest of their lives. For many people, for many people profound and violating inequality show no sign of ease, and their fellow outcasts collude to reject them from the clubhouse they try to join in. My adult, my adult life in games and internet culture frequently involves brutal gendered language uh, over video games. So if you don't want, uh, so if you want someone who feels sorry for you because your family grew up with a Super Nintendo, don't ask me. The fact you got a Game Boy for Christmas and liked it so much you stopped doing anything else doesn't entitle you to a revol revolution. Your fandom is not your identity. Your fandom is not a race. If you think it is, then. You're in our way, and the work I do specifically exists to dispossess you of your sense of relevance. She's a nice gal, uh, gal, don't you think? I like her. Also, she said uh, in one of her tweets uh, that there's, there's no such thing as misandry, just like there's no such thing as, uh, thing as racism against white people. That's uh, also a very nice thing to say. <laughs> what the hell? Yeah, no, that doesn't oh, exist man. because she's a good person, you see. No. And, and, and now no, let's no. look. No, we have we have too much privilege. You can't. Oh, be yeah, no, but let's people. look. Let's look at the the traffic for Gamma Sutra in the in the recent times. <laughs> was that huge drop I see at the end? I don't know. Maybe it's just unrelated. You know, some, summer drop. There's no there's no games. Nobody's talking about games. That's, that's probably what's happening. Yeah, yeah. Speaking of, uh, yeah, so <laughs> she's <laughs> she's That's almost part of the. There, there's this picture of of several people that. Um, if I can just find my little picture here, I, I named the the picture Sinister Six because I think it's uh, it's perfect. It shows just six of these people and the horrible comments that they say. And what's basically the problem? So first you have the Jason Schreier. Nobody at Kotaku has ever claimed or will ever claim to be objective. Lay Alexander. It's funny how dudes who are aspiring game journalists tweet bullshit at me as if I cannot instantly kill all their dreams. Oh, Lay Alexander, you're, 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 you're such a great person. Anthony Birch, again, with like, oh, two Borderland 2 DLCs. I got pretty good reviews from destructoid writers who I was friends with. See, that's the thing. <laughs> He's not being mean to anyone. He's just dumb. He's just <laughs> publicly dumb, right? Yeah, like, yeah. Oh, I, I this should guy. actually take it back. Like, I'm not angry at Anthony Birch. It's just that he's, like, <laughs> stupid in a very... <laughs> Like, profound way. We have uh, Ben Kuchera, editor at Polygon. 
Yes, gamer tears, send them to me. Well, I got bad news for you, Ben Kuchera. Soon you're the one that's going to be crying when nobody, when the gamers you just insulted are not going to go on your website, you you idiot. <laughs> and of course, there's also the magnificent Phil Fish. You, <laughs> you deserve each other. You deserve this morally bankrupt industry. You know, it's not one of his best tweets, but it'll do. And of course, there's the legendary... Yeah, at, least he's admitting, at least he's admitting to the fucking, you know... <laughs> he's right. It is a morally bankrupt in industry. He just doesn't realize that he's fucking in it. <laughs> well, at least he tried to to get out, uh, but for the seven billionth time. But and the last one, of course, is Patrick Klepek <laughs> with his legendary. <laughs> I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Objectivity is a false god, in that it's inherently unachievable. Well, I think his other tweet was worse. The, the so one let's just last not week. try. Yeah, yeah, let's just not try. Why, why would why would I try? It's too hard. I can't be objective, so let's just be as fucking, you know, and subjective somebody, as possible. Be as biased so, as possible. Somebody, yeah, I know, right? Uh, so somebody somebody posted a very uh, funny tweet, uh, which I think it's, it says, 4chan is full of decent people pretending to be stupid assholes, and social justice warriors are stupid hassles pretending to be decent people. Hashtag gamer game. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And I was like, oh, well, if the, I think that's that's the sound of the nail just being hit on the head that I just <laughs> That's really good. Which and, is funny because I, I don't know if as much trolling on 4chan happens as people may think. Like, uh, there there is stupid shit that's written on 4chan, but it's very okay. much like, again, that, that person that you were talking about before is that you can't take these couple of just complete fucking morons or sadistic fuckers oh, yeah. and put them at the head of our campaign. Like, you can't take that guy who said that he was going to fuck anybody uh, Sarkeesian dead and say that they're the face of Gamergate. Well, like, he wasn't on 4chan, he was on, on Twitter, but, but even then, like, are... everybody can post on 4chan and, like, the... <laughs> So, so like even Zoe Quinn was like, "Oh look," or and other people I've seen even a guy say like, "Oh, send Fortune is sending me death threats," and he linked a, a Fortune tr thread directly on on Twitter. Like it's going to disappear in like a day, you dumbass. But he said like, "Look, they're sending me death threats. It's a proof." And then the best gamers again being very funny were like, uh, like I said last week, posting comments of you know just like people talking on, on posts like, oh, like, we should totally kill the best gamers because nobody must know that they're so much more awesome than we are. And then they're tweeting like, oh, look, evidence that for Fortune has evil neckbeards. They're going to come for me. I'm fearing for my yeah. life. Send me money or something. <laughs> um, so, but, you know, these people, th these are good people, Beard. We can't, like, they just want equality and to fight for women. Like, they're, they're just, like, morally better people than us. We We shouldn't criticize them at all like as as can be shown here uh you know the the guy who owns neogaf tyler malkas says um can be about desiring reforms in journalism and resenting women the fundamental motivations are clear here miss crocodile says please stop trying to hide in my vagina you creep hashtag not your shield hashtag gamergate he answers that's a hell of a cavern you're rocking then oh uh -huh. <laughs> mr <laughs> <laughs> And I, I'm going to admit, it is a very fucking hilarious burn, but when you're claiming to be against misogyny and for women, uh, Mr. What, what the Fuck puts it best. Lol, the savior of women, right there. Min, <laughs> Minka Stewart. Wow, telling a woman she has a huge vagina to shut her up. Who resents what now? And Jay Belmont, who's probably like tired of, you know, stopped hunting Dracula and is just, like, posting on Twitter now, says, Gamergate is misogyny. I'm a woman. No, it's not. Shut up, cunt. Really shows what's inside social justice warriors. Yeah. Oh, man. No, it's, uh, it's funny because I watched, uh, we talked about it last week, uh, the Internet Aristocrats live stream that he was actually doing on yep. and just after our show. And uh, he explains social justice warriors very well, in my opinion, and just saying that it is very much that, and just that they're trying to take, you know, they're they're so left, it's going to the point where they're, oh, yeah. and, and know, I'm they, they want to restrict what anyone can say. Oh yeah, and I consider like I, I consider myself I, on I, the left, and. It's funny because before that kind of shit happened, I, 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 I had trouble imagining what extreme left could be. Somebody would have been like, well, communism, Matt, but I mean, <laughs> I mean, just extreme ideologies like that. And now with the social justice warriors, I'm like, 
oh shit <laughs> and it's yeah. in a way it's why i i think i need like it, it it's it has to stop being so extremist because then it you know it just removes um legitimacy for people who are you know on the left than reasonable but uh, speaking yeah. of uh you know that that last guy was the the basically the one who owns NeoGAF. And NeoGAF has been shown, uh, well, it's basically a place where you have to toe the line, you have to say exactly, like if you say anything that is not that does not agree with the consensus there, you're gonna get banned. And, and I'm not even exaggerating, like even recently somebody tried to make, uh, so this is the, the message they received. You have been banned for the following reason. If you think that GAF is a hive mind where people get banned for disagreeing, then you don't need to post here. Bait the ban will be lift. Never. Uh, <laughs> well, thanks for proving my point. Like, it's the summum of irony, isn't it? it it's really what NeoGAF yeah. is. <laughs> it's, <laughs> oh my god, yeah. And again, uh, I guess I... Yeah, I, I, I guess I could talk about Milo Yiannopoulos, who made good articles and is really fucking funny on Twitter. Um, but first, I want to... There's 10 minutes left. Damn, I thought we would have way more time yeah, than this. We, we move away from Gamergate. Uh, Until... Really? Okay, because this was about Gamergate, oh, okay. too. Oh, okay. But, no, uh, no, sorry. I, I, guess, I, I guess I'll go very quickly over it, because, again, it was nothing that was confirmed. But basically, people started thinking that Zoe Quinn was scamming money from people because on our website it says that parts of the proceeds from buying our game because it used to be not free would be donated to ifred which is uh i guess a uh, thing to you know prevent suicide and that kind of st uh, thing because of course our game is depression quest but then people uh, were like wait a minute they they asked the uh, charities so there was this one and the suicide hotline uh, because she changed at some point they asked her uh, they, they asked the, the, the company, is like, do you know about Depression Quest or Zoe Quinn? Did you receive any money? And both said, we have no fucking idea who they are. We never, uh, we probably really? we don't know any money we received. Yes. And then people started to really uh, go crazy about, about that to her. And at first, I'm going to admit, I thought the same way. But then, I don't know, I forgot what exactly made me change my mind or made me think about it. But I was like... You know, there's this saying that says, before seeing evil, think that what might be causing this might just be incompetence. And again, I'm butchering the saying, but... And I was like, you know what? I think that Zoe Quinn probably just didn't know how the fuck you set a charity. And she just was like, so, like, on my own, I'm just going to give part of the money that I received to the charities, you know, just like that randomly. And of course, it's, it's kind of against the law. It is because you have to set to, to, to you know make a written thing with the to be able to advertise your game as like parts of the money you're gonna give me will go to um, to this charity. It's it's an ad advertisement tactic, so you have to kind of make arrangements. But it it seemed that later on it, this was confirmed that yeah she just didn't know what to do and she did donate some money to Ifred and those charities. But she, yeah, okay. she just, so basically she just, she did try to hide it originally, like she removed the part on her website where, where it said that she was going to give the donations to it. And it's, it's funny because then she, po like, as this thing was blowing up, she posted on Twitter, like, are you happy now? A hundred percent of the proceeds from my game for a week will go all to this charity. And then people were like, but wait a minute, Zoe, isn't your game free? It's free. <laughs> yeah, it's free. So a hundred percent of zero is fucking zero. <laughs> That's great. Are you uh, fucking kidding me? Like, <laughs> what? What? She must... No, she's not that stupid. She's well, trying to fucking scam people. Come on. She knows if she's making money off of her game or not. I don't believe that for a second. That When she tweeted that, she said... Well, they did oh, say that... I Fred did say that they received money from her. It just wasn't oh, like this official thing. I believe that part. I, I mean, the other... Are you guys of happy course. now? I'm going to send 100%. Yeah. Like, oh, pff, probably. Yeah. <laughs> and um, it's funny because then a Loping, a user again that was very active uh, with regards to Gamergate, started this charity... Uh, to basically give money to to suicide, so he basically started ch a charity on CrowdRise, and it got funded. Like he asked for two thousand dollars, and it got funded in over an hour. 
Uh, and now yeah, this is uh, crap. So so yeah, 4chan yeah. 4, 4chan made like raised even more money than than her just because, <laughs> and even 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 people posted comments like oh well look at 4chan spite funding something again I'm like what the fuck <laughs> really See, we can't even get credits because... for being good guys. <laughs> when I read about this crowdfunding thing actually on the Escapist, um, I didn't realize that it was yeah. like a 4chan thing. Uh, they, uh, like, they did use, what is her name, uh, uh, um, that, that, that girl that they designed. Vivian James. Vivian James, Vivian the James. character, it's a character made by, by 4chan, yeah. Like, I'm looking at the article right now, and it, it's interesting, because it almost seems to me, anyways, and perhaps I'm just projecting on this, yeah. but that, uh, the person that wrote this, Robert Stoneback, almost seems to, again, be on the journalist uh, side. Yeah, like he, and he is, he but... This. Uh, he is, uh, but but he did make an article about it that seems fairly fair. So uh, actually, I was going to mention. That it it he did. does. I mean, he doesn't. Yeah, it, it to doesn't him. seem like he's pointing it out. But well, sort of. He puts it on the front, but uh, he does admit that. Um, well, he he doesn't say it's a four chan thing, basically. Like, there's nothing on this that says this is what four chan does. It just says that there was a fundraiser. Uh, in the wake of the Gamers Gate incident, and that's about it. Like he he so, does say how much was raised and stuff, yeah. but he doesn't say that it was four chan or you it know was, which side. Basically, I mean, well, to which be fair, did. probably not just four chan donated, but they did donate a lot. Speaking right. of like, last thing about Zoe Quinn, is there? As you might know, some people have a Super Smash Brothers four or you know their 3ds Wii U versions. They can, so they can have codes for their 3ds to unlock the demo. Um, and somebody tweeted, uh, just got some more codes. First 10 people to tweet drop dead at the Quinspiracy hashtag Gamergate get a Super Smash Brothers 4 code. Uh, she retweeted it, and then she posted, go get some free games, guys. And I'm like, well, you strike me as a victim, Zoe. <laughs> That's all I'm going to say on it, you know? Stop harassing me, please. Hey, give me some attention, though. I don't know. That's just all I'm going to say on it. So, uh... Less uh, so, uh, four minutes. <laughs> four minutes. I, fuck. Uh, we might go over time. It's, it's fair though. We we are a bit in the uh, gamers drought. The so. yeah, in the gamer get. I do have some news, but yeah, first. Um, so there's been news about Anita Sarkeesian because some people, you know, I maybe you might have heard uh, hints of it in interviews uh, that I've read before and other things, but it's been allegedly confirmed by a police spokesman that Anita did not contact them since March, since last of March. If you recall, she said recently that because of comments that she received on Twitter, she had to leave her home. She went to the police. And so it was first said by a guy who makes uh, basically a documentary called The Circassian Effect to kind of call her out or something. So I was like, okay, wait, I'm not going to necessarily believe that. But then Milo Yiannopoulos also basically sent an email to this guy. The same police officer managed to find him, and he did confirm, yes, I've been very, like, I, I've, I've known that this call because I guess a few people c called me about it and stuff, and yes, like, honestly, there's nothing under the name Sarkeesian since a long time. So it, it and again, he wanted, uh, Milo wanted to go uh, and talk about the FBI about it, because let's be fair, maybe she didn't go to the the, the the police, maybe she just went straight to the FBI, or maybe somebody lost a report and stuff, but again, it shows that first video game journalists should have checked this before just being like, we believe you, Anita, um, and it might seem that she might have lied about harassment, and that she is indeed a professional victim, but again, it's not quite confirmed, but uh, yeah, what do you what do you think on that? I, I wouldn't be surprised if she made that up. <laughs> I know, right? Or again, I don't know. Or maybe she didn't report about it. But regardless, um, it's like it's stupid of her to take somebody like that really seriously, especially over Twitter. Oh, right. <laughs> oh yeah, um, she she fucking overreacted. Like there's no there's no other way to say. I mean, well, and she did black out like. Uh, I guess her address. Presumably her address and stuff, which would be pretty fucking creepy. Um, yeah, that's fair. That's really know. fair, actually. I just, I, I guess I can't really decide. We have to, well, I, I hope some more people are digging on this, and hopefully we can have more information. 
Um, so yeah, there's nothing else we can really say about it. Uh, so more news on the Fine Young Capitalists. It, it got completely funded. The goal of $60,000 is achieved. And from the 4chan link, 23,000 out of the 60,000, so it's a bit more than a third, is from 4chan. Also, uh, the Fine Young Capitalists tried to make an account on NeoGAF and they weren't able to. Then they tried to make another random account with a different random name and they were able to. So, again, <laughs> fucking NeoGAF. Um, there's other things that I wanted to see. Uh, there's other people who, of course, criticize the Fine Young Capitalists for uh, getting money from 4chan. They say that the fact they have good intentions doesn't mean they should be immune from scrutiny or criticism. But then the, the same people, when Anita gets criticized, they're like, oh, stop oppressing her. So, again, more cognitive dissonance here. There's other things I wanted to talk very quickly. Again, I'm going quickly because we're about to end. We're going to go a bit over, but uh, yeah. There's, uh, th there's answers to Gamergate that were posted. There's, uh, there's the Rock, Paper, Shotgun to Gamergate. And this I'm going to save for next week because I really want to talk about it. So we're going to do that uh, next week. There's also a game of the character Vivian James that is kind of like... Uh, mm. in, in alpha stage that people made on V that is actually very fun for a demo. It's 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 got tons of cool shit in it. I'm gonna also gonna post that in the description. Video game news now. All right, I made it to the end. To the <laughs> usually we're finished at this point, but we're we're just gonna talk about a bit of video game news. Basically, um, Destiny, that the game. I wanna I wanna show something really quickly because it got shit reviews. Beard, look at that. Six fair. From uh, oh. from GameSpot, the good, excellent fundamentals make it a joy to handle a gun. Fantastic vistas and magnificent soundtrack. Intricate competitive maps with clever touches. The bad, repetitive missions containing repetitive encounters. Abysmal storytelling that makes you unlock and seek out basic plot elements. Well, no fucking wonder with like the evil darkness is attacking. Uh, end game as you grinding the same bullet sponge bosses over and over again. Six fair. And I'm like, Again, I don't even see how this game got all this fucking hype. But oh, okay. I, I know, right? I I wouldn't manage to give a flying fuck about it as like when I saw it, and you know, I, but I, you, know, I, you know what I, I think they should do next time, like an FPS MMO. Like that's what they were saying it was, and I don't think people understand that that doesn't sound like a very good thing to me. Yeah, because but because the fun the, the fun part about uh, first person shooters is you know shooting people and they get realistic damage from a gun. That's what I, I think makes Stalker very good for example so if you have a boss that is just like a bolt sponge and you just have to keep shooting at it it's fucking boring um again you know <laughs> anyway but yeah so i'm like really like destiny getting a six from GameSpot. that's fucking amazing that's crazy you know i think the, well it just shows that for destiny 2 the only thing they need to do is throw even more fucking money at it and you see even even somebody managed to uh find a glitch to get infinite ammo in the game. So, again, all this fucking money doing <laughs> wow. wonders. I actually, just before we did this, um, because my internet has been a little spotty, and again, I've been pretty busy, I watched uh, an article in Dorkly, and they were saying, you know, they showed a developer when they were first showing off Destiny, being like, oh, on that horizon, like, it's all playable game space, and then it shows actual gameplay of the place that he's talking about, and the guy <laughs> and takes not. a step forward. And it's just a giant cliff, and when you fall off of it, you die. So he was just blatantly <laughs> lying. Like, <laughs> so terrible. So uh, again, in more video game news, the Smash 3DS demo, as I mentioned earlier, uh, for Platinum members of the Nintendo Club, um, though, so they have it. They have codes that they can send to friends and stuff. Um, and so also, people about it found that you could link the 3DS to the Wii U. And so somehow, so they, they argue that you could probably connect both versions so that you could keep your progress, all that kind of stuff. So that's cool. Mm -hmm. Also, there's yeah, some new characters yeah. that were revealed. I think most people know about it, but Beard doesn't. So first of all, playable is the do Duck Hunt Dog Beard. What? Yes. What the fuck is happening? <laughs> and he has like... his ducks, and he throws projectiles and shit. <laughs> and uh, okay. no, see, it's it, it looks cool though. It's very fun. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm not saying it's a bad idea. It's, it's very interesting. It sounds kind of weird. Like, there's gonna be so many kids that are like, "What is this?" <laughs> like, I usually there's just. Wheel, but yeah, usually know. there's I, one. I, work, I 
I've worked with kids. Like one one thing that I found out is that a lot of kids that were born past, uh, like I'm working with age groups. Most of them have been born 2002 and closer, and a lot of them don't know what the original. Haven't seen the original like Jurassic Park or like original Aww. Disney movies, which is really sad. I know. The, like especially what? the original Disney movie, it hurts. Even so, they know they won't know what the fuck Duck Hunt oh, yeah. is. They and, will and have worst, no idea what Duck Hunt is. And and worst is, uh, I guess I'm gonna go over a few things. But basically, now Minecraft, especially for kids, is still very very popular. Yep. Even like even not just selling Minecraft for two billion dollars to uh, Microsoft. So kids hmm. in the next generation, kids who are playing video games right now, they'll say, Mario who? I, I just know about this, this guy called Steve and the Creepers. Isn't that fucking terrifying? Yep. <laughs> we're getting yeah, old. A, well, oh, you know what? Me. But it's okay, man. Oh, yeah, we're getting old. But it's it's interesting. It's a different kind of... Yeah. I'm, again, I'm still very excited for this medium. I think we're, oh, yeah. you know, this, this Gamers Gate thing, it's rocky. I have faith. <laughs> I... Uh, I think gaming's heading in the right direction. So quick, quickly, uh, also, like, uh, there's other characters who are confirmed. Baby Bowser, who fights in the kind of, like, helicopter from Super Mario World. Dr. Mario, <laughs> is, Dr. Mario is back. I'm very happy because he was my main in Melee. Also, he doesn't have the shit move Mario has. So, yeah, yeah for that. Um, I guess I'm going to show the new fucking Batmobile for the new Batman movie really quickly because it's, it's important, sort of important, I think. If I can... Yeah, new I can Batman just... movie? Oh, is this well, the Batman versus Superman thing? Yeah, and and here we go, if I can find it. Yeah, it looks like this. So it's even more of a tank than in the Christopher Nolan movies. <laughs> Some people commented, you know, I kind of miss when the Batmobile was an actual car, but uh, oh well. I don't know, it's just... Yeah. Uh, there's nothing much to say about it, I just wanted to point out. <laughs> I don't uh, use guns. <laughs> Yet there's tons of them on my car. Yeah, you know, it's a good point. Those don't and... count. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not yeah. using them. My car is using them. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's fucking perfect. Like, it could kill somebody, and it has the shape of a gun, but not really a gun. <laughs> oh, man, that's fucking, that's fucking glorious. Also, yeah, I don't know. I, I find it pretty funny. There, uh, to be entirely honest, I stole that from a YouTube video. Just Aww. to throw it out there. Oh, right. and I yeah. thought you were really funny now. Uh, <laughs> anyway, no, so... no, I have to throw out credits where credit is due, even though I can't remember the kid's name or the cartoon that it was on. But Fair enough. Yeah. All right, so again, there's tons of more stuff that we had for this week, but we'll probably just talk about them last week. Um, yeah, I have to go. Oh, no, that's sad. Okay, well... Yeah. But uh, no, it was good. The Gamers Gate thing is good. I uh, again, folks, continue your support. Um, remember, it's uh, just like the internet aristocrat said. And to to be entirely honest with all of you, I still have to get around to it as well. Um, not due to laziness, due to the fact that <laughs> I'm super busy. too busy. Is uh, sending emails out to marketers like really make yep. this gamers game thing something that they cannot ignore? I okay. I don't think we need gamers journalists anymore. Like fuck them. Um, <laughs> and Beard, this Beard. is just ridiculous. And to be fair, Beard is super busy because since the last podcast was last Saturday, I didn't talk to him until today. So <laughs> really goes yeah, to show I, that he's got no time for himself. But I had to abandon a Dota game. Can you believe it? I feel like trash. Really? Oh my god, you scum! You're terrible. You, you belong know. in the trench. I <laughs> All right. So, all right. So, again, I hope you guys enjoyed watching. You can leave us some comments. Actually, before we end, maybe we should check if we have any comments. Did you check, Beard? I'm gonna I check, did. I'm going to check I my haven't. Twitter. I did not. Aw, that's kind of sad. We got so many comments However, last week. thank you for all of your comments last week, folks. Uh, we appreciate you watching. And, again, feel free to comment. Uh, this YouTube. week. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Twitter, Twitch, we appreciate it. Uh, we hope you're enjoying the show. If you're getting sick of Gamers Gate, let us know. If uh, again, uh, call out to anybody that thinks we're in the wrong. We would uh, appreciate a discussion with someone with a different point of view. For um, sure, definitely. And you know, if you like the podcast and you want us to to get, if you think it deserves to be more popular, talk to us about to your friends or your Steam group or your grandmother. I'm sure they'll just enjoy 
watching all like our fucking magnificent selves argue about all things gaming and sometimes sometimes pen and paper RPGs, sometimes comic books, sometimes other stuff. You want us to talk more about or these anything, subjects? Really. Too? Yeah, tell us. Or, or about anything, really. Yeah, that's... The... <laughs> oh, shout out to this amazing intro. Uh, anyways, so, again, for the last time, thank you very much for being there, and we will see you the week next, still again, 7 p.m. EST, Saturday. Bye. Bye.